All right. Hello, everyone. Um, let me, uh, we'll get started here. So we're going to talk about TAP Forms 5. And uh, for those of you not familiar with TAP Forms 5, it's a database. So basically, what I'm going to cover is uh, why we may want to use it, what the different tools are out there, how it compares to FileMaker Pro or Airtable and, you know, some other ones. And then we're going to get into uh, the nitty gritty and just kind of take a look at TAP Forms 5. We're going to look at this on the Mac, iPad, and iPhone. So um, first, a little bit about me. I'll make this real quick. Uh, for those that you are not familiar with me, uh, my name is Dan Wasink. I'm owner, trainer, everything about Dan's Tutorials, uh, formerly known as Noteboom Tutorials for the people that have been around for a while. I have over 30 years of publishing experience. Most of that is magazine publishing. But um, online publishing is starting to creep up on uh, on that. So I'm also a former Apple genius, worked at Apple for about three years. And I help out at a local school about a mile away from me. And they have uh, probably about 1,600 MacBook Airs and iPads. So I just kind of help out with them. It's about 10 hours a week. Not not too many hours, but it um, you know it gets, me, uh, gets me out a little bit. So that's a little bit about me and my background. Let's get back over to... Tap Forms 5. So basically, um, what is a database and how does it compare to a spreadsheet? Why would someone want to use a database? I think this uh, this would probably be first to, uh, to talk about. And basically what a database is, let's see here. Um, a database allows you to keep track of different data. So it could be a list, something as simple as a grocery list. Uh, you can also do this in a spreadsheet. I know a lot of people will get spreadsheets and databases confused because they really can do a lot of the same things. Um, basically, the reason why you may want to use a spreadsheet, they're easier to use. It's just a list. It could be a list of invoices. It could be, you know, basically a list of serial numbers, whatever, however you want to, you know, configure that. And they're pretty easy to use where a database, they can do more, they offer more flexibility, but being that they offer more flexibility, they're also not as easy to use. So in going through all this, the idea is to try to find a balance, one that is both easy to use and has the flexibility. And I believe this is where TAP Forms 5 falls in. It falls kind of in the middle there, which is what we like. Um, so I'll go with this little, I created this little chart to kind of show you how it, uh, what, what I'm talking about here. Um, hold on here a second. There we go. Um, so if we look at this, we have our flexibility here on the left. And really, you know what we what we really want is a a database or our solution to be you know more flexible and then across the bottom we have our ease of use and again we want it to be easy so really what we want it is to be right let's see where my camera is we want it to be right below where i'm pointing here we want the most flexibility with the easiest of use so where do these different solutions fall into place you know something like filemaker pro or a spreadsheet so a spreadsheet falls in right about here. It's easy to use, and it has you know a little bit of flexibility, but not not a lot. You you can't create different layouts for it as an example. You can't sync it. I mean, you could through iCloud or whatever, but but a database you can sync it across all your different devices. Um, you just you can manipulate the data more in a database. So. A, a spreadsheet or this is actually collections is another database program that's out there. If you go to the app store, you can find it. It's a very, very simple database, extremely easy to use, but not very flexible, but it might work for, for what some people need. Spreadsheet, a little bit more difficult to use. You can do a little, you know, charts and things like that with it. Um, and it offers a little bit more flexibility than collections database. Again, that collections database, if you search in the app store, you'll find it. Then what we have here is Airtable. This is what I personally use on a regular basis. Airtable is an online solution 
although they do have apps. And with this one, we're starting to get into that difficult stage. It's more flexible, but we're starting to get into that difficult stage. You got, there's a lot of setting up to do. And then we have my favorite, FileMaker Pro. I still, I still love FileMaker Pro, but it is also the most difficult, you know, um, and it has the most flexibility. So our goal here is to find something that's kind of in the middle there. We want it to be able to do something, but we don't want to have to, you know, read manuals and things like that to get it to do it, you know. And that is where I believe Tapform 5s falls in. This is just kind of my thinking here. It's relatively easy to use, and it offers quite a bit of flexibility in it. So this is why I think Tabforms 5 is, is a really, it's a good solution for managing your lists. And that's basically what a database is. It manages your lists. You know, like I say, it could be groceries, could be invoices, could be serial numbers, it could be albums. I have, um, I collect LPs and I have a database where I can keep track of which LP. So now when I go to an antique store and I see an album, all I have to do is just pull it up on my phone and I can see if I already have that album. That's where the beauty of all this kind of lies in. So that's basically why, you know, one of the reasons why I like Tapforms 5, it kind of falls right in the middle there um, for, uh, you know, keep managing your lists. So let's go back, let's see here, and Okay, so about Tab Forms 5. And what we're going to look at here is I'm just going to give you a, a brief overview so you can kind of see what Tab Forms 5 is. And then what we'll do is we'll get into, like, say, some of the details of it. But before I show you um, the details, I'd like to just kind of show you what Tab Forms 5 is. So I'm going to go to my Mac here. I do have it on the iPad and iPhone as well. So here it is on my Mac. So this is Tab Forms 5. And if we look here, you're going to see I have, you know, all these different lists here. I have calling cards, clients, and this is all built into Tab Forms 5. When you download Tab Forms 5, it comes with all of these different forms. These are what we call forms. I'll go into the vocabulary shortly. So if I wanted to look at all my bank accounts, I just click on bank accounts and I want to add a new bank account. I click on the plus, and now I have all of the details that I can go and add. So it makes it really simple. I mean, I just go in my bank name, the account type, the account number, who the account manager is. You're going to see it has a little contact here. So then it connects it up to my contacts app. I can choose someone from my contacts app. And then we have the website, <coughs> excuse me, the website address. And when I click on that, it takes me over to that website. If I go over to, let's take a look at um, expenses here. With this one here, we have a pop-up menu, expense type, what type of an expense is it? So as you can see, it's pretty simple to use. And they have these pre-formatted things built in. Date. I go and enter a date. And when I enter the date, what I'm also able to do is go up to my view here, and view it in a calendar. So I'll be able to see when that uh, expense was spent in a calendar per se. I can see, uh, you know, reimbursement. So the idea behind this is it just keeps track of all this information. On the iPad and iPhone, whoop, I'll reconnect back up to those. Um, but on the iPad and iPhone, we have the same type of information there. So let's get into some of the details of what a, a what Tab Forms 5 is. And I think this will help understand when we're when we're looking at this um, what it is. So uh, let's go back over can, can to I, yeah. just interrupt for one with one question. Yeah. Uh, when I look at the at what you just demonstrated, it, it was not the visibility was the picture was not clear at all on my monitor. And I wonder whether that is, is a general thing that affects everyone. Can everyone is can it, can move on the okay. of the picture. All right, everyone. Um, first um, of all, uh, 
it's the same with me, Eckert. So I was wondering yes. if it was my system as well. Uh, same Ken, here. Same all right. So yeah. we're yeah. Your your, your thank you, everyone. How about that? That's that better. better. That okay. is better. Sorry about that. Make it better. That, that's all right. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone. Right. Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. So basically, I'm looking at uh, tab forms five here, and um, let's go over the terminology a little bit here. So with tab forms five, what we have now it's not showing up there when I switched. Well, that's a bummer. What happened to my keynote? Sorry about uh, this. I have it all squared away. You have two items on your screen. Like I see a double. I'm not. I'm sorry. I am not looking at Zoom because I switched screens here. Hold on here. And screen sharing. Okay, so you can see my text there then correct correct yeah. uh i don't see a text yet yeah, all right every all right in. everyone please mute your microphones thank you all right uh, i see i see you and i see the insert circle with you dan and dan database documents i do I, not see database documents wow what the heck All right, let's um, go here. I'll All just right, I'll just explain it here. So you okay. can see my Mac now, correct? Yes. Okay. So what we have here is um, basically with database documents, what a, a document, a database document in Tab Forms Five keeps track of all of your different lists. So you, let's say you had a grocery list, an invoice list, and a password manager type list. All three of those would be in a database document and you can have different database documents. So essentially I could have a personal database document and then I could have a work database document. So when we're looking at my Mac here, you're gonna see I have databases expenses. That's my database document. This database document keeps track of all of these different forms. So these are what we call forms. So if you're coming from FileMaker, FileMaker calls it a solution. A solution can have different tables in it. Well, that's basically what these are. These are tables in the FileMaker world. And Tab Forms 5, they're called forms. So all of these different forms here are located in this database document. So now we have this database document with all these different forms, these lists. What are these lists comprised of? Well, a list is comprised of different fields. So let's go with our grocery list. A grocery list could have the item, that's gonna be one field. What the aisle is, that's gonna be another field. What the price is, another field. And what the grocery store is, that's another field. All, all those four or five fields are going to be in that one form, the grocery list form. So when I go over to my expenses here, this is the form. And then these are all of the different fields. So I have expense field, amount, date, if I have the receipt for it, you know, and you can go and create countless fields for a particular form. You can also format these fields. So if we look again, you're gonna see the expense type here is a pop-up menu. So I can easily just select what type of expense it is. And then we have a date here. That's another field type, the date. We have a checkbox here. If, is it reimbursed? All I have to do is just click on the checkbox to select if it's been reimbursed. So we have our fields, which we can format, for each selected form, and then our forms are in our database document. That's basically how it's organized. Now, on top of that, what we are able to do is create different views. 
So if we look up at the top, you're going to see we have my default layout. This is typically what you will see, the default layout. And it has all of the different fields. But if I go over to my albums here, I mentioned earlier that I have my albums in a database here. We can see that I have different layouts here. So these are, think of this as a, a, a different window into your data. So if you have your data, you know, let's um, you know, think of it like a house, you know, it's in a, in a specific room. All this data is in a specific room. Which window do you want to look at? Depending on what window you're looking at, you're going to see different parts of that data. So in this case here, I can see all of the data. Default view shows me everything. I want to see more of a visual. This is one that I created. It makes the album cover a little bit larger. And then I can include specific fields in here. And then I also have this new layout where it's smaller and I can see the rating. So our layouts are different views into that data. And that's the beauty of a database. You can't do this necessarily with a spreadsheet. We can really make this visual. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I say that on the Mac, we can add these different layouts. Now there's one catch with, with the iPad and iPhone. With the iPad and excuse me, with the iPad and iPhone, we cannot create these different layouts. So if I were to go to my iPad, you wouldn't see these two different layouts here. So that's the basics of what a database is and the different terminology. The last thing I want to mention is we can relate these databases to, I'm sorry, we can relate these different forms together. Now, why would you wanna relate forms? Well, a perfect example would be if I'm looking at my clients here. So I have a client and mug. And I can have all of their details in here. But now I make a call. Let's say I call George or call Eckert or call Sheeta. And I want to make a record of that. Well, what I could do is I could just go over to the plus here and then create another record. But then what I'm going to have to do is enter in all of this information again, the contact information. That doesn't change with each call. NMUG is the organization. All I want to do is keep track of the conversation itself, the notes, that kind of thing. So what you can do is you can relate two different forms together. I have my contacts, and then you have your notes. And a contact can have multiple notes. So you're going to see here, these two tables are related. And essentially, when I go to my clients here, you're going to see I have here a call log. I want to add another call. I just go and tap on the plus. I type in what it was about. I put in a date. And now we can see we have two calls for in mug. I go and add another one. Type it in here. So now I have three calls here for in mug, but when I go over to my client, I can see all three of those calls. And we can see that each one is for in mug. So I don't have to duplicate it, keeps everything relatively organized. Another perfect example of this is invoicing. You're going to have one company that you're going to invoice or one person that you're going to invoice, but you're going to have multiple invoices. So you can look up that one person. So I can go over to that one person here and see all of the different invoices here. And that is what we call a one to many. So we have one and it can link to many different um, records. There is also many to many. And a many, a many to many, what you can do with that, and you can do this with tab form, sorry, and this is where you can't do this with spreadsheets. With a many to many, this would be a, a perfect scenario for this would be teacher and student. A teacher can have multiple students. So there's your one to many. But we can flip that around as well. A student can have many teachers. So now what you're doing is you're going many to many. Many teachers can have many students and many students can have many teachers. And I'm not talking M-I-N-I, -I, I'm saying M-A-N-Y. Um, so basically what you, you know, like say, Tab Forms 5 allows you to do all of this. This is where that flexibility comes into play. 
You can create these many-to-many -many relationships, one-to-many relationships, or even just create a flat database. Now, a flat database where it is where it doesn't have any relationships at all. So when I go back over to my albums here, this is a flat database in the database world. It's just one, one form, one table in the FileMaker world, and it just has all the data in there. There's no reason. Now, what I could do is I could create an artist table, you know, for the, for the music artist, and then I could click on Pink Floyd as an example, and it would show me all the albums with Pink Floyd because I, it's a, it would be a one to many. One artist can have many albums. So that's one way you can do that. But in some cases, why would you want to do that? That's where you can overcomplicate things too. So you don't really want to, you know, you kind of have to balance that. Can I ask you a question, Dan? Yeah, go for it. All right. You spoke about um, invoicing. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, and you can just say yes or no. You don't have to show me. Can you create invoices with this program? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And essentially, Sheeta, what you would do is you would just create a, a table here called invoices and uh, you would link it to the uh, to your clients. And all mm -hmm. you have to do, much like clients here, instead of a call log, it would say invoices. I click on the plus and I enter in the enter in the details for that invoice. So that's the basics of why you may want to use a database. And FileMaker, what you, you know, FileMaker gets into the really, FileMaker used to be in this simplistic world here, and it's getting more and more into the enterprise. So then what Apple did 20 years ago is they came out with Bento. Bento was great. I still love Bento. I wish they still had it out there. Um, and they decided to stop development of that. So now FileMaker doesn't really have a good, um, inexpensive solution. And is basically what it comes down to. So that's where Tapforms 5 comes in. And I'll be honest, I'm not affiliated with them at all with the developer or anything like that. Um, he's emailed me a couple of times because I have some tutorials on this and just thanked me. But um, outside of that, I pay for this. Um, and, you know, it's nothing special. Um, and I like Tapforms 5. Um, Bento was a little bit easier to use, but of course you had FileMaker behind it. This is one individual, but um, really this is, this is a pretty good program. So before I get into, we're going to actually create a form and show you how this all works. Does anyone have any questions on, you know, why you may want to use one, things like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Don't do that, Frank. Sandy wants to know, uh, Sandy has a question. Sandy, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, I've been using FileMaker for a fair time, but fairly simplistically. And I wonder, does it, does Taproom 5 allow you to import FileMaker files? Yeah, so basically the way that, that any database works for the most part is what you are, what you can do is you can export it, and this works with spreadsheets too. You export it out as an Excel spreadsheet or you export it out as a CSV. This is a comma separated value file. Um, and essentially FileMaker will export that out and Excel will export that out. Numbers will export that out. Um, and then all you have to do is go into Tab Forms 5 here, and you're going to see import. And what I'm able to do is import the records here. And when I import the records, you're gonna see I can choose which file, and there it is, comma delimiter, column delimiter, I would go comma because that's typically, or you could use tab, but these are standard file formats um, for databases, tab delimited, comma delimited. Um, and basically I just go and import them in there. I should, I'm gonna show you uh, numbers here. So you can kind of see how it works with compared to numbers to a spreadsheet. So I'll just create a new document here, let's go blank. So in, in numbers, when you go and create a, a spreadsheet, what we have here is our header row. Everyone's probably familiar with that. This is where you put your, you know, number, um, uh, invoice, uh, text, could be date. 
So basically, everyone's familiar with these little with the header there. That's basically what the fields are. So when you're looking at a, a database in tab form five, these are the fields. If I were to export this out as a comma separated value file, these would be the fields. Over here, each row, so let's say I have uh, three rows here selected and I had data in there, those are the records. So each, if I were to put numbers in here, just put some text in here. If I were to export this out, what it would do is it would export three records out into these fields. That's the basics of what a database is. It, it really is quite simple in, in that context, but you're very limited in what you can do here compared to what you can do here. You know, pick lists and things like that. That's why a, a database is better. So back to your question of FileMaker, yes, you can export that out as a comma separated value file, and then you import that into FileMaker Pro. I mean, sorry, Tab Forms 5. One catch. It works great if it's a flat file. Remember how I talked about flat files where they're not related to anything. It'll work perfect. If it is a related database, then it's going to be a little bit more work. Can it do it? Absolutely it can. But it's going to be a little bit more work. Probably uh, something I don't want to get into here, but you would create a join. And the way that the way that relationships work, let me just explain this, see if I can simplify this. The way that relationships work, when I go over to my clients here, you know, in mug, and then I have these invoices, or I'm sorry, client calls. Essentially, what happens is there's a hidden field in here. There's a hidden field in NMUG that we can't see, and there's a hidden field in client call log that we can't see. Basically, that hidden field contains the same number. So, so essentially, let's just for simplicity call in the client call log, let's just call it one. And then NMUG is also number one. So when those two equal each other, it links them together. So in FileMaker Pro, that's basically how you link databases together with relationships. You have a field, and when this number matches that number, oh, these two are related. This must be related to that, to that one there. So what you would have to do is export out that number and then create a join. Again, not difficult, but probably beyond what we want to cover here. But yes, it is absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, Frank, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Is uh, is uh, that program um, tap forms? Is that owned or rented? <laughs> it is owned. It is not a subscription. Good. Is that what you okay. mean? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> uh, my guess is. See, he is. Um, he got a lot of flack when he went from tap forms four to tap forms five. Um, and so he's been at Tap Forms 5 for several years. I would not be surprised if he was working on Tap Form 6 and there was a, there probably will be an upgrade, which is understandable, but it is not a subscription. You do not pay for it. You do have to, I believe you have to pay for the iOS apps separately, but they are not subscriptions. All right, all yours, Dan. Okay. Um, I also see on there, can you import images, pings? Absolutely. You're going to see that, you know, these are, these are images here. And the beauty of it is when you put it on your iPhone, you, if I was at that antique store and I wanted to take a picture of the album cover that I'm buying, I can do that right from within tap forms five, and then it'll sync across all the different devices. So let's take a look at how we can, we're just going to recreate a, a crude my albums here just make it um, recreate it so you can kind of see how it all works because this one has you know we have our album i have a rating in here i have the year in there um, so we can kind of see how you know how it all works so essentially all you have to do is the first thing we have to do is we have to create a new form this is our table I'm in my database document. Remember, the database document is like the parent. So I'm going to create my form within this database document. So I just click on the plus here. And you're going to see it says a new form. So I'm just going to call this, go over here to forms here. 
And I'm just going to call this albums too. So this just names it. The next thing you're going to see is category. If we look over on the left, we have these different categories here. So I'm going to keep it in my personal category, but what I'm able to do is change it here. And I'll show you towards the end where you can customize these categories. It's in the preferences. But basically, you just add it to your category. And then how do you want it to sort your fields? <laughs> well, the first thing we need to do is we need to add our fields. So now I've created the shell. That's basically what a form is. It's a shell. I can't put anything in here. There's no, there's no fields. It's like... Uh, creating a grocery list without putting anything in there. I can't, okay, now I have to decide what I want in there. Do I want to have the aisle? Do I want to have the grocery store? Do I want to have the amount? In my case here, I want to have the artist, music artist. I want to have the album name. I want to have a rating. Those are all fields. So I have my shell set up. The next thing I do is I go over to fields here and I go and add my fields. So we just go and click on the plus here to add our fields. So let's just go with the album name. Just type it in here. And now I'm just going to go and add another one. We need the artist. I'd like to have a rating. Do I like this album? So I go over here, create a new field. And again, rating. But the field type, what I'm going to do is click on this. And I'm going to select rating. You're going to see we have a number of different um, field types here. Is it, uh, you know, if this was a date, I could put it as a date, a date and time. Is this an audio recording? Is it going to be a calculation? Is it a check mark? It's all we have to do here is just select what type of field it is. So I'm going to go back over to my rating. So now I have my rating in there. Down towards the bottom here, what we can do is we can set what the default value is. So by default, it's going to be five. I can rate it five out of 10. Let's go and add a notes field. This could be where I put um, the track items and things like that. So I just go click on the plus, and this is going to be notes. And now I go over and select note. I have to change a field type because it went from default of text to a note. So it's just telling you that uh, it could erase. This is brand new, so I, there's nothing to erase there. And, <laughs> excuse me, down here, I can select different fields again. I can, if it was a password, I'd be able to mask it so you couldn't see it. Um, is it just a plain text note or do you want to be able to format it? Maybe I want to have links in there. So I'm going to leave it as formatted. We're going to add one more image. So now I go cover. And instead of text, this is going to be an attachment. So I go file attachment. Oh, photo. I'm going to go with photo here. File attachment could be a PDF, you know, things like that. I just want to keep it as a, as a photo so then I can use the camera. So as we can see now, we have my album, artist, rating, notes, and cover. From here, all I have to do is go and create a new record. When I create a new record, we can see all the different fields there. So I can type in here, um, let's see here, Genesis. I'm a big fan of 80s music. Um, so we're going to go with Genesis, and I love that album. I click on the notes. I can go and, you know, love this album. You know, put in whatever I want, close it, save it. And then if I um, had the album cover, I could drop it in here. And what you can do is you can go to Wikipedia, look up the album cover, and just drag it in here. That's what I basically did for my albums here. I just got these from Wikipedia. And uh, basically, you're starting to build your database. So within you know a sh few short minutes, what what I was able to do is just go and create you know my database. I can go and start you know hauling notes. You know, um, add that in there. Go and add another one. Add that in there. 
you're going to see that now that I have some fields in here, what uh, I want to do is, is modify the form again. We're going to go back over to where we modify the form. This is where we added the name and the category. And you're going to see that I have a cute little icon there for the album artwork. And my new one is a kind of boring pencil, a piece of paper. Let's, um, let's brighten this up a little bit. So what we can do is go back over to our form here. And when I click on form, I can go and modify all the different form information. So let's go change the icon first. So I go and find my album here. We'll just go that one for now. Um, and now you can see it has the little circle there. Below that, I can set how I want it to sort. And this is in our list here. So basically, do I want it to sort by the artist? Do I want it to sort by the album? So I would just basically go, I want it to sort by the album name. But also what I wanted to do is I wanted to group them together by artist. So then if I have multiple records by one artist, it's going to group those, all those together. So if we look here, you're going to see that I have group records by. So I just go here to artist. And now what it's going to do is group multiple albums by the same artist together. So if we want to see what that looks like, we go back over to my albums here. And when I go and group them, we can see we have Beatles. I have Hey Jude and Let It Be. I go down to uh, Commodores. I have the Commodores, Natural High, and The Greatest Hits. So it's grouping them together. If we go over to this form, you're going to see that it is sorted by artist. So it's going to, you know, sort it um, alphabetically by artist. And then what it's going to do is sort it by rating. So it's going to have my highest rated ones first. I could sort it by year. Maybe I want to have, because I enter in the year the album came out. I could also just go year here. So now what it's going to do is it's going to list them by when they came out. But over top of all that, it's going to group them by artist. So that is what this is doing now. Grouping them by artist, but sorting them by album name and then the year. And essentially, you can see I set it up the same way here. Over on this list here, you can also set how many items you want to see. So right now I'm looking at the title, the album title, Hey Jude. I'm looking at the artist name, Beatles. I'm looking at the year. If we look here, you're going to see that I can set how many fields I want to see. If I just want to go with two, now it's just the album name as well as the artist. Maybe I just want to have it the album name. Well, then I just go over here to one. So you can set what you want to see in this list. I like to keep it at about three or four. So then I can see the year, everything else with it. How do I set what is shown in this list? We go back over to our fields and we have our sort order. All I have to do right now, we have Hey Jude, Beatles in 1970. Let's put the year above the artist. I just go over to year here, drag it up above artist. And now we can see the year is above the artist. So this field order here is what is sets what is shown here in this list. So essentially, I'm going to recap here. We have our form which has our fields, and then we go and add our records. We have our different layouts here. To add a new form, we just click on the plus. We go over to form here to show our little sidebar. And then I can go and click on form here, and I can go and set all the details for that form. Before you can set your sort and group settings, you need to go and add fields because this is all based on fields. So it's kind of like you're going back and forth. You go and set the basics up for the form. Then you go and set the fields up for that form. Set the proper order, what type of fields they are, things like that. And then you go back over to form. So this is where it swings back. 
And then you can go and set how you want it sorted, how you want them grouped and all that. Once you have that set, it's pretty much set. You don't have to do anything else. If you want to create a new layout, and then, again, this is only on the Mac, all you have to do is just go over to your layouts here. Actually, you go up here to, to the top, layout. And now what I'm able to do is create a new layout. So I just create the layout and I just go and say, I want this here and this here, and I want the year here and the album cover here. Um, let's go with the track listing here. Um, well, go and move that. So you can, you know, you can go and add shapes, you know, things like that. So you can make it pretty, add colors, things like that. So now what I have here is I have my default layout and then I have my new layout. So how did I use this? Now we're going to go into, um, I was using this for keeping track of all of my lessons. So now this, this one gets a little bit more complicated, but I just want to kind of show you what you can do, the potential of this. So when I go to my tutorials here, you're going to see I have all of my different lessons. And each lesson, what I have here is I have the lesson, the topic, the heading, what the status is, which are radio buttons. I have when it was added, what the collection is, what the OS version is. I keep swiping up. I have the description. I have the featured image, the creation date. So I have a number of different fields in here. Well, depending on what I want to do, I might not want to see all those fields. So then what I did is I created different layouts. So I'm going to edit a lesson. Well, when I'm editing a lesson, I don't need to see some of those fields. So when I go over here to edit lesson, it's set up where I can go and edit that lesson. I'm not going to see some of the, you know, some of the fields like date created. No reason for me to see that on there. If I want to go and add a lesson, when I add a lesson, I want to see a different set of fields. So now I just click on add lesson here. I change the background so I know that I'm on the add lesson. So I have a visual impact of what I'm doing. And now I can go and add the lesson in here. I just have the fields I need when I add the lesson. If I need to copy it from my site, what Tab Forms 5 will do is, is manipulate some of the data in a calculation field. That's just another field type, calculation, and it'll give me what I need for my website. So now I go over to my copy for site. I'm done. I've added the lesson. Now I want to get the copy from my site. Well, though, that's a different set of fields. So now I just go over here to copy for site, and now I can copy the fields that I need for adding it to the website. So that's the beauty of these different layouts. What you're able to do is show the data that you need for what you are doing. So if I'm adding a lesson, I need to see this layout. If I'm copying a lesson, I need to see this layout. If I want to see all of the data, and I go back over to my default layout, and I can see all of the data. So that's the beauty of, you know, the different layouts. On top of that, what we're able to do, now that we have this data in there, we can save searches. So if I click on this little triangle here, these are all my tutorials. We're going to go to photos here. So I have my tutor for photos. And make this a little bit wider here. I have tutor for photos for iPhone, Mac, and iPad. So I want to see all of the lessons that are for the Mac. All I have to do is just click on this. And basically what it's doing is it's showing me my lessons for the Mac. So how is it doing that? Basically, it's just a saved search. It's, uh, you could call it filtering. I think that's the newer term um, over top of saved search. It's just filtering those. So when I go and control click on this and edit the search, what we can see here is the tutorial has to contain and the heading has to contain tutors for photos and tutors for iPhone. So, okay, so this is for the iPhone. I thought it was for the Mac. But anyway, you get the idea. I can go and save that search. So when I go over to my Mac here, these are all the lessons for the Mac. If I control click on this, you're going to see it says tutor for Mac. So it's finding all those lessons that are tutor for Mac. So 
basically what I'm able to do is select any one of these. And this is a flat file. This is not a related file. So if, if you're starting out with Tab Forms 5, I would, I would recommend don't, don't go right into relationships. That's, that's an advanced step. All this is done with a flat file. It's just, if I were to export this out as a CSV, I could import this into numbers. And each one of these fields here, when I go to my default layout, each one, actually we'll go to form here, fields. Each one of these fields here would be a header, a column in numbers. Each one of these records would be a row in numbers. That's basically what it is. That's 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 the the most simplistic view of a of a database is put it into a spreadsheet. And I could easily do that. I just go file, export. I want to export the records. We're going to export it out as a CSV. Export. I'm going to put it. Let me put it on. Oh, there we go. Desktop. Exported them out. Now, when I go open, we'll go to my desktop here. There it is. CSV file. There it is. There's my lesson, topic, heading. I keep going. And we can see all of the different data in there set up in a spreadsheet. I want to put this back into a spread into a database, export it out, and then I import that into, into Tab Forms 5, and then I can manipulate it. The beauty of Tab Forms 5 or any database is you can manipulate that data. So um, that's that's essentially you know how how it all works. So let's take a quick look at the preferences because uh, there's a there's a couple of key components with the preferences. Um, one of them is syncing. So you can sync it with your iPad and your iPhone. So I basically go up to my tab forms five. We go over to our preferences. And we have our different um, tabs up here. First one, general. This is where we can set how it wants to back up. I'm a huge fan of backing things up. Every time I quit, what it's going to do is it's going to back up this database. Perfect. That's what I love that. That's what I want. Then we go over to lists. So lists are, remember how we had those different categories and I had those pick lists? Um, this is where we can kind of set that up. So here, let's go with um, collection. So I have different collections for my tutorials. When I click on that, I get a little pick list that I can pick. This is where I can set that up. I have Accessibility, Apple and Education, Beginner's Lessons, and Troubleshooting. Let's go with music genre, rock, pop, soft, alternative. I'm not a country music fan, so I'm not going to put that in there. But if I did, I could just go and click on the plus, add country music, and then that would be able to show when I click on that pick list when I'm in my albums, I could say this is country music. So we set up our pick lists here. And what you can do, which is really cool, is you can set up a pick list to auto fill. So it can be based on the entries in a record. So as you add new records, what it'll do is it'll pick, create that pick list based on what's already in that record. So I could easily create a pick list for artists and it'll look at all of my artists and it'll populate that. I go and add a new artist, it'll add it to the pick list. We have security here. When do we want it to lock? You know, if um, do we want it to in, encrypt? Do I want to enable Touch ID? Um, maintenance. You know, compact the database. The database is depending on what you have can get quite large. So you may, you know, it's just maintenance kind of thing. But the big one here is sync. So we have a number of different ways of syncing, and it depends on what you want to do. Most cases, what you're going to be using is iCloud. So basically, you just go iCloud, enable, go with that on the iPad and the iPhone, and boom, everything's all synced. You make a change on your iPad, it'll show up on your Mac, vice versa. It just works. But you can also sync using IBM Cloud, and this is a little bit more advanced, but the idea behind this is 
other with iCloud, you are stuck within your iCloud account. I cannot share any of these databases here with my wife. She has a different iCloud account. But if I used IBM Cloudent, then IBM hosts the database. I believe they have a free starter for basic database. You don't have to pay anything for it. And then what Beth is able to do is log in with that Cloudent username password, and she can see all of my data. So she is now able to, I'm now able to share my databases with other people. And that's the idea behind this IBM Cloudent as well as Apache CouchDB. I think most people will be using iCloud, but just know that you can do that. It's a little bit more geeky. I've done it. It's not too difficult, but um, just know that you are able to do that as well. So um, any questions? I see, I, let's see here. I'm gonna look uh, at the chat here. Uh, does a license cover multiple Macs? As long as you are signed into the same iCloud account on the Max, yes. Okay. That's um, with any with I, I will say for the most part with any app, IBM, um, IBM, any app, Mac or iOS, um, essentially as long as you tie it in with the same account, you can you can put it on multiple devices. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so you don't need to have a separate uh, purchase for iOS. Nope. And Mac. Okay, buy through great. the app store. That's one of the beauties of buying through the app store. Um, a, a perfect example, not to switch gears, but clean my Mac. You can buy it through the app store. You can buy it directly from the developer. If you buy directly from the developer, you're going to get faster updates because the app store is just a little slow. And we know how we've all heard stories of how bad it can get. Um, so you're going to get faster updates, but you, they have a licensing to where it literally is like, oh, this is already on one computer. You can't put it on another one. But if you get it through the app store, like Tapforms 5, that is tied to your iCloud account. So as long as you have your same iCloud account on all those different Macs, yep, it'll work. Yeah. Can you set up uh, an external storage for storing the database, an external device? Um, I'm, I'm going to say no, you know, outside of like iCloud or, or, or Cloudant or anything like that. I'm going to say no. Basically what, what, um, Tapforms 5 does, if I were to go and look for this database, what it would be is it's in, uh, it's in your documents folder. It might even be in the library folder. It kind of puts it into, it doesn't necessarily hide it, but it, doesn't make it easy to access because you really don't want to see this. It's not a list. It's a, this is a true SQL database. It's, it's a geeky thing, the, the engine of it behind it. So. All right. Jerry Schultz, uh, Schultz, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes. Um, I had a couple of questions. Um, I noticed in your list form that um, you have a lot of white space. I wondered if the uh, white space could be could could be shrunk uh, any so you could get more more information on one screen. Um, you're talking about this here. Yeah. Yep. So essentially, what I have I have a rating here. So what you would do? Remember how I talked about how many fields you can see here? You can't configure this for the most part. So what you can do though is if I go over to my form and I go to, you're going to see it set up for three fields. Let's go with two. No, I don't want to see the rating. Oh, here it is. Field rating. Unspecified there. So I took the rating out. Um, so no, I'm going to say no, it's pretty much how it is. Not a whole lot of formatting with this. Okay. And second question was, does it have a calculation fields? Yes. It does have a calculation field. Um, if I go over to my dance tutorials here and let's go with photos for iPhone. Um, if I go to my fields here, there's one. You can see the little icons here that tell what kind of a field it is. There's gonna be one here that is a calculation. That's a little calculator here. 
So let's see here what this one is. Calculation, field title. There's the formula. So it's just taken that off of a field. So, but basically you would add your formula right here in it. Create the field, tell it that's a calculation field, and then go in here, edit the formula, and you can go and edit the formula. So does that include things like text manipulation? Yep. Yep. Um, and I would recommend, you know, taking a look at this, you know, it's, it's your typical, if you're familiar with FileMaker Pro, you'll know how this works. If I wanted to add some text in here, let's say excerpt, if I wanted to, so that's taken the field excerpt. I wanted to add the word excerpt. So what I would do is I would go quote, and then, and the ampersand, and then X, whoop, I need to put in there a colon, and I want to capitalize it. I believe it's the ampersand for text, might be the plus, um, and then make sure that the result is a text. This is typical calculation. FileMaker works the same way, and you will have to play around with this a little bit. It's um, it's a little clunky, but it. Uh, if I won't save here, now what it should do is add that word. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it should. And somewhere in here, I don't see where my excerpt is, but it should add the word excerpt to it. But I don't see it in here. Maybe I don't have an excerpt on this one. So but, another thing is you're scrolling through here, looking at this, it seems that if you don't have different layouts, when you look at this on, uh, on iOS, that uh, this is going to be a huge problem finding things <clears throat> on an iPhone. Yes. Yeah, because you don't have the different layouts. If you have a lot of fields, yes. Um, let's see if I, my iPad is working here yet. Uh, let me let me reboot. Doesn't take long. All right. Can I ask you a question while you're rebooting? Yep. Go for it. All right. All right. So if your data is stored on the iCloud, does how does that affect the amount of storage space you have on the iCloud? How big can this database get? It could it could affect it. Um, it depends on if you have images. If you store images in your database, that can add up quickly because images can get big. Um, if you um, do not store a lot of images in there, or they're smaller images, you'll probably be fine. It won't it won't affect it too much. Um, and you know, text text files are relatively small, so it doesn't really. Um, Mm -hmm. affected too much okay uh we're gonna wait and is it starting out i thought it was but it's okay, not all, yeah all we see is a blank I, I screen bought, right now um, i bought a new m1 last week so mm -hmm. um, i'm still working out the bugs on this whole setup here so all right so while you're waiting for that john patrick can you unmute yourself and ask your question maybe dan can ask this answer this question while we're getting this booted up mm -hmm. Dan, i think you answered a couple of them already but um and it looks like in the preferences you can set your data to be rest encrypted is that right correct yep okay and if you do a search you could do a multi-field search it doesn't have to be one field at a time um yes you can do multi yes yep you can get quite complicated with the searches absolutely mm -hmm. all, right. all right thank you john all right so here's my ipad i'm just show it on my mac here and when i go into tab forms five you're going to see i have my albums here and Basically, there it all is. So I do I cannot change the uh, the layout of it. As you can see up that would normally be right up here. Um, so you're not able to do that kind of thing on on the iPad. So if you have a lot of fields, like in my dance tutorials here, I have a lot of fields here. Um, you know, you're just gonna have to swipe up here and to view them. What you can do when you are creating your um, fields, I'll show you how you do this when I go back over to my Mac, you can create these little headers and that's very helpful 
if you have a lot of fields. You're going to see that they're kind of grouped together. So here are my tutorial details. And when I swipe up, I have my URLs. This is my content. So these are all the fields for content. So essentially, what you're going to want to do, I discovered this one later in the game, but I, th I think it's very helpful. Um, when you go and add a new field, you're going to see that one of the fields, I'm just going to click on the plus here. One of the fields is called a header field. Let's see here, where is it? Section heading. This is not a field per se. It doesn't have any data in any, or anything like that. But what it is, is it's a section heading. So now, essentially, if I go and add this, drag this all the way up to the top. Oops, I missed it there. Try it again. Drag it all the way up there. Get up there. It's not going. Well, I'll just go down to the bottom here. Um, you're going to see I have my section heading here. So now what I'm able to do is place fields below that. So even though we can't create our own layouts, what you are able to do is create different sections, and then you can collapse them. So it does it makes it a little bit easier. You can see I have to scroll a lot here for code for the site, so I can just go and collapse that. Here's my transcription. You know, um, that can get quite long too. So I just go and collapse that. And now I can just go and select, if I collapse everything here. What yeah, that, that section heading is great. That uh, that helps a lot, thanks. Yeah, that uh, It was one of those things that I found later, like I said, later in the game, but I'm like, oh God, why didn't I do that earlier? You know, and this is where it gets into what I like to do when I play around with the program. I always recommend people go into the preferences, just see what you can change. And same thing with, you know, when I'm looking at these different types here, take a look at some of these different types. Um, it, it, you will find that in some cases, oh, that'll make it that'll make it a lot easier. Yeah, I can use that. And then and uh, so just don't accept everything by default tinker a little bit so okay uh baxter thomason can you unmute yourself and ask your question uh yes <clears throat> i used to use access mm -hmm. uh microsoft access and one of the things i did was <clears throat> renumber like 1.2 or 10.3 so it resort things but then i had a macro that or a script that would renumber those just one through Mm -hmm. whatever is i saw a header called scripting so i yep. was wondering if you use that at all on anything i you know that you can get into it depends on how how far you want to go you can get into java javascript in here um i'm not big into that kind of and uh, you can see i experimented here a little bit um but i'm not real big into that it, i can have it clear some fields and i had to do some investigation it's it's a little bit beyond my knowledge. Um, I know the, the basics. But yes, you can do that. Another thing you can do um, is view this as a spreadsheet. And then you mm -hmm. can almost use the spreadsheet type tools. And the way that you do that is you have your different views up here. I didn't talk about this. But if we go to this one here, multi-column list, lo and behold, look what I have. I have a spreadsheet. We got our headers and what you're able to do, if I were to go and put, you know, I'll just go with a four here. When I drag this down, you're probably familiar with this with spreadsheets. Auto. Ah, yeah. Yeah. And I believe I'm going to, I'm going to make an assumption here. It should, if I go four or five, it should know that I found a pattern there. Oops. I screwed up. Let's try it again. It should know that there's a pattern there, right? Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm assuming that it would probably do that auto number kind of thing if you drag it down. I'm not doing something right. It's got to be able to do that. That's a standard spreadsheet rule. Nope, not letting me. But anyway, you can probably Google that. But you can view it in the in the spreadsheet form here to get to your okay, data. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. And again, that's the idea of 
flexibility. You have, you know, the most, you know, that's why I say this is kind of a best of all. I can do everything FileMaker can. And spreadsheets can do a lot of this, but you have to really know your spreadsheets. And, and um, once you get the gist of how this works, and you can really do some complicated stuff with Tab Forms 5, but once you get the gist of how it works, it, it's, it's really pretty powerful. I see in the chat, somebody asked about um, importing non-flat. I talked a little bit about this earlier. Essentially what you would do, if you, if you, for those that know how relationships work, like I was talking with your key fields and all that, essentially the way that you would do that is you, with a, with a related database, basically you have two tables in FileMaker, two or more. We'll just keep it simple, two tables, clients and um, contact, you know, the, when you contacted them or clients and invoices, those are the two tables. So you would export, boom, CSV, export this one, CSV. Make sure that those two tables have that key field. Then when you go into Tap Forms 5 here, what you're going to do, you could call it key field, and you'll do this on both tables because you're going to import both of those tables in there. Then you're going to see in here, link to form. This is a relationship. This is how you're going to link it. And I would recommend going to Tap Forms 5's they have a pretty good manual on their website. So I would definitely recommend he, he, he breaks it down pretty simplistic. And I like that. Um, but basically link to form. And then down at the bottom here, you would say, which form so I would say I need to, if this was my uh, invoices, I need to link it to my client. If this was my clients, I need to and link it to my invoices. You know, it doesn't matter what, however you want to work it. You want to make sure that, so I'm just going to go here, wine collection, inverse relationship. So then you're looking at one, you can see all the stuff from here. You're looking at this one, you can see all the stuff from here. It, it basically is creating a, a two window view. And the last step, if you're importing them in from FileMaker, what you need to do is click on join and then you select your key field. So here I would say wherever where my key field is, and on the other one, wherever my key field is. And then when those two match, I might be getting a little geeky here, sorry, but when those two match, Tab Forms 5 will then show all the related data. I click on a client, it, that client is key field 12. When you click on, when you select join, your invoices, any invoice that has the client ID of 12, again, that's how relationships work, it'll show all of those invoices. And that's all you have to do is click on make join. That's the one to many, many to many and join. So sorry if I got a little geeky there, but that's how it works. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> As a follow up, Dan, you, uh, you would do that same thing and repeat it if you had more than yeah. two tables? You can link up, yeah, absolutely. You can link up, um, you know, more than, more than two tables, absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see a question on can you use tab from five with Xcode. I'm not really sure what that means. Xcode being a uh, development kind of thing. So I don't know exactly how. Uh, so if you want to explain, Fred, what, what, what are you talking about there? Um, print forms, create different layouts, and you can print that. All right, Fred has Fred's open. Go ahead, Fred. Yes, uh, I, I'm. Uh, I want to write. I'm, I have an application that keeps track of a, a lot of budget information, and uh, it was written under Windows XP about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I want to rewrite it in Xcode, but I need a database to operate underneath the Xcode so that I, I can uh, display it on my screen. Will it work with that? No, I'd say no. Um, I, I would email the developer and ask him. Um, but, and he's pretty responsive. Like say, he's emailed me a couple of times. Nice guy. Um, absolutely. Just go out and ask him. He seems to be pretty responsive. So thank you. All right, Judy, can Judy Span, can you unmute yourself and ask a question? Um, I asked several, I don't remember which one. <laughs> uh, last one, do images include PDFs? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I believe I believe it does. If it's not, then what you can do is field type here. Um, we have attachments and attachments definitely would. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So I'm assuming that there is not a restriction on size of any of these uh, fields. Uh, you, or is there? I would, you know, and that goes with anything. I mean, if you have mm -hmm. a hundred megabyte PDF, don't put mm -hmm. it into a database. There you um, go. It has to sync it, and that's going to use up a lot of data. I believe when you let's go over to attachments here. Um, Multi file, so you can you can go with. I thought it was there was a thing where you could say just link to the file. Maybe I'm thinking of FileMaker Pro because with FileMaker Pro, what you're able to do is not store the actual data in the database. You can store it outside the database, and what it does is it creates a symbolic link to that. The problem with that though is you're not going to be able to view that PDF on your iPad, or your iPhone, or your other Mac because it's not stored within the database itself. So um, maybe that's why they don't have it in here. Um, FileMaker Pro does do that, but um, like say you run into a problem with that. And basically what I would do is I would just make sure you don't attach anything that is really large, you know. Um, in fact, here you can see when we go with a photo, and I don't know about a PDF, but you can, you know, break it down a little bit and change the quality and all that to make it a little bit smaller, but don't make anything too large. Just general rule of thumb. Okay. Uh, thank you. And with that, it is uh, 1244. And I want to thank everyone for all of their questions. And Dan, thank you so much for all of mm -hmm. your answers and for your presentation. Excellent. Thanks.